Hi, this video is a remake of one I made a while back on uh, using the slide rule and estimating the decimal place in the slide rule. The slide rule is very useful for many years in, in terms of uh, making uh, arithmetic calculations. Uh, the big problem was not just learning the C, A, B, and C, and D scale, but learning how to estimate the overall magnitude of a number. If you look at any slide rule book, they have a couple of different methods. One is uh, sort of just guesstimation. You know, if you get two factors, you might be able to round them off and, and figure out the overall magnitude. Another is looking at how many times your uh, your right index goes, you know, your left index passes over this way and, you know, and counting how many times it goes this way. And that gets very confusing. I think that was only meant for people that were... Uh, just beginning the slide rule and gain a little confidence in their calculations. I think any uh, scientist or engineer uh, didn't use any of those methods. They used uh, partially the one I, I mentioned before, the, the simple estimation method, just by eyeballing it. Like you can do that with a simple calculation like, uh, like this one, 126 times 2.78. And you know, you know it's gonna be approximately, if you round that off to 100 and round 2.7 out to three, it's gonna be in the order of 300. Okay, and so if you look at the, I won't go through the C and D scale for every one, but I'll do it on this one. If we look at 1.26 on the D scale, put the left index one on that one times 2.78, 2.6, 2 2.78, and it's right at 3.5. So. We know that if we do this on a C and D scale, we get 3.5. And then the big question is, which is not so hard for this one, what is the exponent on your scientific scale? And obviously it's going to be times 10 to 2. 3.5 times 10 to 2. And if you look at on the slide rule, it's very close to that within two or three decimal places. Or if you look at it on the calculators, it's that close. So this type of calculation, you wouldn't need to really do anything. You could do it on your head. Use your C and D scale and come out with 3.5. You know it's going to be 30 or 350. It gets more complicated when you have to uh, look at a larger set of numbers. And I'll cover this up to, to start. Uh, it's it maybe there's people out there savants that can can do this in their head. Maybe I could come out you know subtract a few things uh, exponents in my head. And in fact I, I think normal people in the day would have actually discounted the exponents in their head and signed them up. And that's essentially what I'm doing down here. If you just convert everything to scientific notation, you don't have to write it down like I've done here, but you can just count the exponents. Three in this case, one, two, in this minus two in this case on the bottom denominator, two for 850, one for 6.23. And then if you just add up the uh, Exponents, you get uh, 3 minus 2 is plus 1 on the top, 2 plus 1 is plus 3 on the bottom, and of course when you divide exponents, you subtract them. So that will be times 10 to the minus 2. Likewise, we can just do the simple estimation, round off to the nearest numbers, what I usually do. 3.56 is 4, 4.75 is 7 still, 8.5 is close to 9, or you could do 8, and then... Uh, 6.23 obviously is 6. And you can simplify, you know, cancel out 2s, and you get about 14 over 27, which is close to 0.5. Okay. And sure enough, if you do the calculation, it's it's uh, on the slide rule, it's uh, very close to 0.5. Actually, it's very close to 0.5. So you would know that uh, on the C and D scale, if you got approximately 0.5, it's times 10 to minus 2. I think the exact number if you're wanting to know, is uh, 5.01. So 5.01, and actually that's times 10 to the minus 3, will be the correct number. And I think the calculator shows it 5.008 times 10 to the minus 3. So I've got, I've got two decimal places, which is what you'd expect in a slide rule, depending on how large the numbers are. Now that is all easy, if you can do all that. Um, once again, if you if you don't want to write it down, you can simply do this in your head. You know, you can say, well, that's plus one, three, 
minus two is plus one. You could maybe jot down a one over here. And then two plus one is three. And you know it's 10 to the minus two overall. Note that I had to uh, adjust it to minus three down here because the, the estimate was uh, 0.5. So it's 0.5 times 10 to the minus two, which is close to five times 10 to the minus three. Okay. So that gives you your order of magnitude, and, it, and more often than not, your, your slide roll using A, the C and D scale will come out you know, within an order of magnitude. Maybe sometimes your estimate is not so good. It might be six times 10 to minus three or something like that. So you would just know that it's, it's in the order of minus three. A, a harder example is when you have something that's not so easy to get to a root um, when you have a square root and there are methods for estimating square roots that I like to use and in fact when you use a B and the a B scale for square roots you generally mark off the number in terms of twos times 10 to the minus 2 so I kind of put a little knot notch here indicating that in the a B and C scale I would use the square root of 53 so I would go to the uh, for that one I would use uh, the second scale so I would look at 53.6, approximately like that, and get about 7.2 down here. Now, I wouldn't write that number down necessarily. I would just go through the calculations and not do an intermediate write down of the number. I estimate this. So I know that 7 times 7 is 42 or 49. So I know it's like at least a 7, but a little more than 7. I might guesstimate 2. So I've got a 72 here. So that's going to be an exponent of plus one, plus one over here. So one plus one is 10 to the to the two. And then down here, we don't have any roots, it's pretty easy. It's three, four, plus one is 10 to the five. So I know that the least of the exponents are gonna be 10 to the minus three. Okay, now I just go through the same uh, guesstimation I did before, rough estimation, 28 is close to 3, that's close to 7, close to 2, 7's cancel, and I get 1.5 times 10 to the minus 3. And let's see if I do the, I won't go through, but you know, you do the A, B, and C scale, C and D scale, on a slide row you come out with a number of 1.53, I get 0. Sometimes the accuracy is diminished quite a bit because you're using that smaller scale on the root scale. So that's times 10 to minus 3. And if I did that on the calculator, I think I came out with the number 1.534. So I've got uh, at least two decimal places. Sometimes you can get better than that, but uh, that's within the 0.1.2 relative error. So not too bad. Um, one thing I would say that uh, this is not only valuable for learning how to use a slide rule, but in my opinion, uh, this type of, of calculation method should be taught everybody in high school and even in, in reinforced in engineering. I think uh, you look at any first chapter of a physics book gets really kind of glossed over, but they, they go through this you know, uh, rule of uh, order of magnitude estimation that everyone should really know if you're working in the sciences or engineering or technology. Uh, you know, nowadays, you know, we would not, we'd probably use a spreadsheet for this, dinner a formula, but if uh, you misprint a number, you know, you're going to be off of order of magnitude. This allows you to at least go through, if you've got a column of, uh, of calculations that use the same formula, that, and if you make a, you know, wrong, a wrong uh, input, you could potentially be off on all your whole spreadsheet, which is, I've had happen to me before, and it's quite embarrassing. So in later days, I've taken to estimating at least one calculation on the spreadsheet to make sure that I've typed in numbers in and they make sense um, within an order of magnitude. And uh, I think in my experience with the slide row, I learned er in the early days, I, you know, I, I learned how to use a slide row. I didn't really need to, but calculators are just coming about. And, uh, but uh, I learned that uh, it was, you make a lot fewer mistakes in a calculator, but still when you use a calculator a lot, you can make mistakes. And, and at least in later days, I've kind of used this as a hobby. 
I kind of kind of rate myself, and I think I make about as many mistakes on the slide rule as I do the calculator now. Sometimes I'll check myself on a calculator, and whoops, I've missed uh, zero here. So it's a good method to kind of check yourself and make yourself a better scientist and engineer and give you more of a feel for the numbers that we've lost with uh, spreadsheets and calculators, program programmable calculators and so forth. So anyway, I hope this was helpful. I'll leave a link to the uh, great videos that were done in the 1940s, 1944. If you just, if you just Google or in the YouTube search engine, Google or a search for slide rule 1944, You'll come up with three or four videos, I believe, or at least two or three that that go through the A, B, and C, D scale, and a little bit on estimation, but that use the real simple examples that are easy to do in your head. Hopefully, this was helpful. Thanks a lot.